Hello, my name is Tom and welcome to my channel. Um, I'm a doctor working in the UK and also the creator of the Zero to Finals resources for medical students. And in this video, I'm going to be talking mainly um, about how to cover the vast amount of information that you need to cover in medical school, and in particular for medical school finals. Now, one of the biggest stressful things about medical school is simply the breadth of information that you need to know and how you're going to cover everything in the time that you have. And this is most prominent when you're preparing for medical school finals because you essentially have to cover everything and be ready to um, answer questions in your exams on any topic. And this creates a bunch of questions such as which topics do you need to cover? How much detail do you need to go into for each topic? What will really come up on the exam? How is it possible to learn everything in such a short space of time? How much coffee is too much coffee? Is there anything new on Netflix? And what am I going to have for lunch today? Having such a vast amount of information that you need to cover for your exams can be really overwhelming and it can lead to procrastination, not actually doing anything, a lack of motivation and feelings of anxiety. When the challenge seems like it's too big for you to overcome, then this can often lead to doing things that you'd rather be doing or distracting yourself with other things that seem useful rather than doing the work that you need to be doing, particularly if you don't have a clear strategy about how you're going to tackle the problem. I've been through medical school and I've also done a whole bunch of postgraduate diplomas like the MRCP diploma, the Diploma in Child Health, the Diploma from the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, as well as the GP examinations. So I've been through the same process and the same experiences and come to my own reflections and develop my own strategies. I actually really enjoy the process of figuring out strategies for tackling exams in medical school and also working out the most efficient and effective way to learn medicine. And this was part of the reason I did a degree in psychology and also did a part-time master's degree in medical education was because I'm so obsessed with this process of learning medicine, I wanted to figure out the best ways to do that. And I've been reflecting through my 12 year career on different ways that you can approach medical school exams. And this channel is partly to explain my thoughts and my ideas and my strategies in case they might help you with your preparation for exams. So if you're interested, I'm going to create a series of videos where I talk through a lot of my key strategies that I've used over the years that have worked really well for me um, in tackling medical school exams. So consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be notified as those videos come out. It's worth saying before I get started on the concepts and strategies that I'm going to talk about in this video that I'm not advocating that you do exactly what I tell you and you throw away your current strategy. If what you're currently doing is working for you and you're doing well in exams, definitely keep doing what you're doing. If it's not broken, don't fix it. What I'm going to do is give you the things that have worked for me over the course of my career and hopefully there'll be some interesting ideas or concepts that you haven't thought about before that you can consider implementing into your current revision strategy that maybe will make things a bit easier or less stressful or maybe score some higher grades. So let's get on to answering the important question. How do you cover everything in medicine? and How do you learn everything in medicine? Well, I'm going to start by using some illustrations to explain the concept of how I think about covering everything in medicine. So let's jump straight in. Here is an arrow which represents the concept of learning cardiology for your medical exams. And you start right at the beginning end of the arrow as a lay person not really knowing much. You might know a little bit about heart attacks and about cholesterol and atherosclerosis from biology at school. But you don't really know very much and you don't know certainly how to treat anybody who's got any heart problems. Then as your knowledge improves over time and you read textbooks and you see patients on the wards and you gain more experience, you can reach this level of a final year medical student. And this is the level you really want to get to when you're learning medicine for your final exams. If you keep studying, you'll get to the level of an SHO. So this is somebody who's had some experience on the acute medical take. They've treated some heart attacks. They've attended the junior doctor teaching sessions and the grand rounds. And they've seen a bunch of patients who have heart problems as their presentation. So they've gained a bit more experience. Then if you keep studying cardiology, you might get to the level of a GP who knows how to manage all the common cardiac problems. 
If you keep going, you might get to the level of a medical registrar, and this involves learning quite a bit of extra detail, like how to do external pacing, and all the other more complicated cardiology type topics. Then with more learning, you can get to the cardiology registrar, the specialist sort of level, the cardiology consultant, and if you keep studying cardiology and become more and more specialized, you could even become a subspecialist, you know, like an electrophysiologist kind of level of knowledge. But to be honest, in medical school, you don't want to keep studying cardiology to the point where you're as detailed as a cardiology consultant or a cardiology subspecialist. You want to get to the level of a final year medical student. And in this video, I'm going to explain why that's the case. This cardiology arrow is only one of many arrows that you need to tackle in medical school. So remember, you started down here as a lay person, and then you got up to a level of a final year medical student, and you can go beyond that to a cardiology consultant. The problem is, you've also got this arrow for respiratory that you have to travel down, and the arrow for gastro that you have to travel down. And not only the medical topics, but you have to cover psychiatry, statistics, obstetrics, neonatology, and these are all arrows that can keep getting more and more detailed to consultant level and subspecialist consultant level. So any of these topics you can keep studying for more and more time and get more and more specialized in. But the problem in medical school is you have all of these topics to cover. So just to reiterate, we want to get to the level of a final year medical student in each one of these arrows. So if you look at this green ring here, this green ring represents the knowledge level on each one of these arrows of a final year medical student. And this is where you want to achieve in order to do really well in your final exams. And none of the examiners in your OSCEs or in the MCQ exams are gonna expect you to have a subspecialist consultant level or even a med reg level knowledge of any of these topics. So let's take an example of somebody who really enjoys cardiology and spends a lot of time learning cardiology for their exams. They might spend a long time really getting to grips with cardiology and far surpass what knowledge they're expected to have as a final year for cardiology. They might be interested in other medical topics like respiratory, so they get quite a good level of knowledge in respiratory. The same with gastro and some of the other medical topics. The trouble is because they spend so much time learning cardiology and some of these other medical topics, they don't have the same amount of time and resources in order to learn the other topics that they need to learn for their exams. So these topics suffer, which leaves large amounts of information that they need to know for their medical school finals unlearned. So if we draw a box around this, we can see the area of the curriculum that this person has covered for their final exams. And because they spent so much time over here, they neglected a lot of these. And inside this green circle is all the information you need to know for your final year exams. You need to cover everything. So this is why it's so important to only go up to that final year medical school level for each topic. And you might be particularly interested in one thing, in which case, by all means, do a bit of extra work in there. But don't forget that you've got all these other areas of medicine that you also need to cover. So if we look at this new chart where we have knowledge on the y-axis and effort on the x-axis, as you put in more effort, your knowledge will increase on a topic. Let's say this is the learning curve for cardiology. And let's say this is the level that you need to get to in cardiology to sit your medical school finals. What happens when you start putting in effort to try and learn cardiology? At first, it doesn't make any sense at all, and you think, what's going on in this topic? But then, as you put in a bit more effort, very quickly, you gain a lot of knowledge, and your understanding of what's happening goes up very quick. However, as you get to this level that you need for finals, it will take a lot more effort to gain knowledge and understanding in that area because you've already covered the bulk of the key things you need to know, and now you're just on to the more confusing and detailed stuff, which is why we need consultants, and not everything can be treated by generalists. So to summarize, this area where you're learning very quickly on a topic is certainly worth the effort, and you want to spend as much time as you can in this area, because this is the most bang for your buck 
in terms of how much effort you put in and how much knowledge you gain. This area is where your effort is better used somewhere else. So if you're learning cardiology, for example, and you get to that point where you're starting to plateau and extra effort is not giving you a lot more knowledge, then you might want to switch on to a different topic, for example, psychiatry or pharmacology or pediatrics. And that way you can get through as much of the curriculum as possible and maximize your knowledge across a broad range of topics so that you know the bulk of the key topics that you're going to need for your exams. And you can fill out as much of the curriculum as possible and get as far along each one of these arrows as possible so that you don't have big areas of the curriculum where you don't know any information. You might be thinking to yourself, well, that's interesting and all, but how does that help me prepare specifically for my exams? I need more specific information, like how much information is too much for finals? How much do I need to know about the stages of labour? Do I need to know about eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis? How do I organise my time to cover all the necessary topics? And how much coffee is too much coffee? I would suggest the first step is to zoom right out and take an overall satellite picture view of all the things you need to cover for your exams. So all the different specialties or topics that you need to go through to prepare for medical school finals. And here's my best shot at putting together a bit of a list of all the specialties that you need to go through for medical school finals. If you've used the Zero to Finals resources, you might notice that this is essentially the content that I'm creating over there. And you can check that out at zerotofinals.com. Everything is free and there's no need to sign up. There's no adverts or anything. So you've got nothing to lose checking it out. Once you have a list of all the topics you need to cover for your finals or for your exams, the next step is to try and figure out a resource that you can use to make sure that you cover all of those topics. And you don't want something that's too detailed because you obviously will never get through it. And you don't want something that's too brief or shallow in how much it covers because then you won't have all the information you need for your exams. Often the step that people go for at this point is to create their own set of notes. And the concern I have about this is it just simply takes so much time to create notes. Having been building Zero to Finals for four and a half years, trying to create the ultimate set of notes, I still haven't finished and I work really hard trying to put things together as quickly as possible. So to realistically try and create those notes for yourself in time for your exams, plus doing all the other things you need to do like lectures, PBL sessions, small group sessions, attending ward rounds, taking histories, and doing everything else that you're supposed to be doing. It's just not realistic to be able to put forward your own full set of notes with everything that you need in it, plus have time to revise everything in time for your exams. I would encourage you to try and be as efficient and effective in putting together the right set of resources as quickly as possible so that you've got something that you can start learning from straight away because it's really the learning that's going to be key in what you know on the exam day. And remember, for finals, you're aiming to get to a final year medical student level across a broad range of topics. And you want to spend as much time in that rapid learning phase as possible, learning the information rather than trying to collect groups of notes together. So the aim at this stage is to have a big list of all the things you need to cover, plus resources or notes that allow you to cover them. And the next step is to really get started learning them as quickly and efficiently as possible. I'm going to go into a lot more detail about how to learn medicine in future videos, looking at specific tactics and methods for learning efficiently and effective, such as testing yourself, tracking your learning and spacing out repetitions to maximise how much you remember for the exam. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting the like button as it really helps the channel out. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to be notified when future videos come out. Also, if you have any particular questions or things that you struggle with or things you want me to make videos about, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to help out. And I'll see you next time.